Zero volt, zero reference, okay? All right. A radio, a straight RF, radio frequency uh, wave, which would be ideally swinging positive and negative above that e an equal amount. Okay, that's what your transmitter does. It's just creating a high frequency oscillating wave, all right? <laughs> high frequency can carry a long way, so that's why they use it. That's so-called carrier, okay? In order to put any intelligence on it, instead of, uh, I'm going to redraw this here. It's something that's very fast, okay? In order to put some intelligence on it, <laughs> instead of it swinging evenly above and below zero reference, if you change that, like, like that, okay, <laughs> this, this change here can be done at a much slower rate that you couldn't send, you couldn't transmit through the atmosphere. That's the audio frequency. So it, it, it modulates, it adjusts the amplitude of the radio frequency at an audio rate. So that's essentially how the, the intelligence gets transferred. When it gets to the other end of the, when it gets to the receiving antenna, okay, what you're wanting to do is capture this portion of it, okay, and this is uh, relative to, to ground, okay, zero volts. So Get the coil and ground here. Okay. And coming coming off of here is a signal that looks like this. So we've got. Well, it looks nice on the website. It looks worse now. I let my oldest boy drive it. He had a little accident with it. Okay. By taking by passing it through something a diode which will only conduct in one direction, and that's what your cat's whisker does. That's what the germanium diode does. It it it'll it'll conduct when it goes above. Uh, in this direction, uh, above zero reference, but it'll cut off trying to go back the other way. So coming out of this end, you don't have the, the, the full wave waveform. What you've got is, with the zero reference here, now you've got only the stuff that's above it. Okay? And there's RF in there as well, radio frequency. At this point, you don't really care about the radio frequency anymore. Your earphones and your ears can't respond to that. What you're interested in, though, is that you've now got a reproduction of the audio that, that changed the amplitude of the radio frequency at the transmitter site. You've got a reproduction of that in your receiver, and you just need something to turn that variation in voltage amplitude it back into sound. And that's, of course, your earphones do that with a coil of wire or something. And that's, <coughs> that, that's where your earphones or, or this thing comes into play. Am I... Okay, okay, I'll, 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 okay. Uh, I think I've heard the RF and audio frequency yeah. a bit more so. Yeah, it, it's, just, it, it's, it's just how fast something vibrates, okay, if you will. <coughs> so so the, the, the job of the earphone is to take... It, it, it theoretically could respond to this radio frequency, the, to, this, to the variations in there, but it can't actually physically move that fast, and again, your ears can't respond to it. So coming out of here, what, you're, what your ears hear is this, the audio part. Okay. Now, in a crystal set, the, all of the energy to do this is coming originally from the transmitter. Okay, so you're dealing with a very, very small amount of energy. Okay, and and of course voltage is always re relative. It's between what comes in on the aerial and what's the ground reference. This is zero volts or ground. Okay, so if if the earphone here has a very very low resistance impedance path, and I, let me in a minute I'll try to explain the difference between impedance and resistance, but. Um, <coughs> if it has a very, very low resistance path uh, back to ground, you know, it's going to just s s suck all the signal out of you. Not, you're not going to get much energy delivered here at all. You want something that will capture and convert back into audio without drawing, without, uh, drawing all of the energy out of the available rectified waveform here, which is why you want a higher resistance but not infinite resistance. Theoretically, I guess infinite would be good, but um, um, <coughs> so what works well with these tunes, be it a tune circuit as in a tune coil like you've got in your power receiver or a capacitor, a capacitor and coil in, in parallel, 
what works well is again something that's again in the 2,000 to 5,000 ohm range. We moved back to a of five years. Okay. And so that's why you're taking this crystal earphone, which with if you put an ohmmeter across it is going to read practically infinite. All right. And you're putting a resistor across there that's going to give you uh, a, a resistance or impedance that's in the right in the range that you want that, that works well with the tune circuit.